Hello and welcome. <laughs> this is a super late discussion that we're having. Um, so many things get in the way, kind of like life and hurricanes and sharing a book and shit. Um, but we are here to talk about The Roaches Have No King. You saw the book? No, I, I don't. I oh. don't it's, it's Daniel, incredible. what's the author's name? <laughs> Daniel, Daniel Weiss? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, Daniel Evan Weiss, yes. Daniel Evan Weiss. It mm -hmm. was published in what, 1990? 1990. 1990. It was actually recommended to me 15 years ago by my cousin, my older cousin, who said she read it and she thought it was very funny and I've tried reading it a few times over the years and can never get into it. And then for some reason, John decided to nominate it for the book club. I had no <laughs> clue that it was going to get voted for like that. <laughs> to be honest, I was, I'm, that, that sure, sure. definitely That's what, say. Well, what? <laughs> how did I was like, how did that win? First of all, second of all, what did I just read? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's what we're going to find out here, I guess. I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. So It was a fever dream or something. Oh, my God. Um, you know, as always, we are going to be discussing the book in depth. There are going to be spoilers. Not that I think any of you are going to run out and try to buy this book. You totally you will. Do, I commend you. This is, I mean, if you... You know... <sighs> this goes in the wiki category. I mean... I know. I know. Like... So funny story. If you like to read bad books, that, I mean, there's, I know there's and a, people like, love bad people movies. People love bad movies, mm -hmm. so I'm wondering if there's people out there that love bad books. Go for it. It's all you. Uh, mm -hmm. So funny story. I used to have a book club many moons ago, and at one point I walked into Barnes and Noble, and they have like this new release table, and I saw a book, and it had a teddy bear on it, and it was about this teddy bear that kind of animated and started you know, running around and having adventures and doing all these crazy things. And the name of the book was Winky. And so it sounded cool. And I was like, oh, it's a new release. And so we all read it. And no one has ever let me live it down because it was like, <laughs> <laughs> it seems to think it's yeah. up there with the roaches have no king. But I don't know. I'm sorry, Winky guys. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so initial thoughts. What? <laughs> I'm just saying, like... How about give it a little, a little bit of a setup as to what the book is about? Okay. So the book is about a roach colony who was living very well because the residents in the apartment that they lived in were very sloppy. Specifically, a woman used to get very heated and she used to throw around food. So they were feasting while she lived in that apartment. Unfortunately, her and the male Ira that lived in the apartment broke up. And without her around to throw around food, they were struggling to find their meals. And so they started plotting um, how to get her back into to the picture so they could be, you know, living like kings again. And... Uh, I think I think that's a good synopsis, right? Yeah, I think it's a good <laughs> place to leave it. I mean, what did you give it, Tom? <laughs> wow, we already went to the video. <laughs> uh, I, I want to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just want to know. Right. You know what? We'll save it to the end. Yeah. As I was reading, at one point, I'm like, John, is there a metaphor here that we're missing? That we're missing. <laughs> I was like, probably, because it seemed like the guy who wrote it was um, on something. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I, I, did he actually write the story as if he was a cockroach? Like, if, I don't know, did he perso personify himself as, as a, a cockroach? cockroach? I don't know. This is. This I mean, he weird. had to a little bit, right? If he's like giving me his personalities. I'm a now cockroach. A what lot motivates more... me? You know? <laughs> For real. Vagina, apparently. Apparently, but, yeah. Uh, I forgot what was, where it was going. Oh, that I now know the anatomy of a cockroach a little too well without having to look anything up. Right. 
Uh, I don't. Yeah, I didn't need to know all of those things about cockroaches. Mm. So I was actually, you know, when I was asking, you know, is there a metaphor that we're missing? I was like, maybe Tom will know. <laughs> Tom will <Good>. know. <laughs> what you got? But you guys put way too much faith in me. Uh, <laughs> kind of like the kind of like the theme of the book here. You put way too much faith in. Yeah, yeah. In As him. I was like setting up, I was thinking, you know, maybe it's just not that deep. Mm -mm. The one, the one thing I picked up on was right, right at the end of the book where, uh, what was it? He had, he was inside of that cupboard, you know that that's the promised land, yeah. that space in the wall, but he didn't quite make it. You know that was reminded me of the biblical story with Moses. He was allowed to see the promised land, but he couldn't enter because he died before getting to the promised land. But why he flips that around and kills off everybody else and leaves the king, you know. So I thought, okay, that was interesting. So, I'm apart sure. from that, you know, you know, he he talks about like ancient uh, civilizations, and you know, I thought that was interesting at the very beginning of the book. How he, you know, like is it to hell or Troy and that sort of everything, and you know, but the only the thing I realized is like, like with any science fiction book, it's like you know, oh, our civilization is so much better than theirs, yet we live off them. Did you guys ever see Life of Brian? Mm -mm. Oh, uh, so long ago. I need to. You had it. Yes. Watch, yeah, that, watch yeah. it. John, watch again. Desiree, you should see it. Uh, there's yeah. one scene in there where they have like one of these Jewish rebel groups and they talk about the Romans. Like, well, what have the Romans ever done for us? Well, the aqueducts, you know, schools. <laughs> <laughs> and they go through this whole list of things. You know, and that's what, the, like, the cockcock is like, well, what have humans ever done for us? It's like, well, you know, they give you the food, shelter, and everything else. So. So the interesting thing was that I put this book down, you know, several mm -hmm. times, not while I was necessarily reading it this time, but the other times in the past that I had tried to pick it up. And, you know, you figure I was 15 years younger. And I just felt like the roaches were just way too intelligent for me. They were born instead of books. They had all this book knowledge. They were talking about history. And I was like, I have no idea what these roaches are talking about. Right. And, uh, and that was kind of why I couldn't get into it. Now when they started introducing the characters, I think that got me a bit more interested. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what he what the author was thinking. It, but this is like it's like apparently it's a cult classic because I've actually spoken to other people about it that say mm -hmm. that there's like, you know, a small group of people who absolutely love this book and I'm not That's a very sure. small group of people. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> but so I met someone randomly on the internet when I was like tweeting about the fact that we were reading this and he was like, that's my favorite book. And I'm like, are you shitting me? And he was like, no, seriously. Regardless of the quality of a book or whatever it is, you're going to find somebody who's going to say, that's going to be my favorite. <sighs> you know, the chances are very small, but that's what, you know, given the internet, that's, I can't help but think that that's the truth. I mean, I just, I have this, this feeling where it's like, well, I want it to be my favorite too. Show me how to yeah, look how at it. Work? Yeah, when you see that, I'm not, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I don't, I'm not even sure how to like generate conversation off of, off of this book. It just seems like they just tried to like make something, I don't know, is it more of a mockery? Like, is it, is it like, this is what life is like with a, from a bug's perspective, like do we, do we really care about everything else? Is it, is, is it doing going that route? Well, I mean, there's lots of like computer animated movies like Ants and, is that the only one? <laughs> where we see like, bugs, bugs was another one. Yeah, Bugs okay. Life, where we kind of see things Bee through movie? a bug's perspective, so. I think I mean, honey, I shrunk the kids if you want to get liberal with that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I miss those movies. You know, to be honest, I was enjoying it until until. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> until all the vagina came into play. I like at that point it was just like no, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> just no. <laughs> Say no. <laughs> Boom. There you go. No. Like, um, there's been multiple times to this book. I'm like, it, are they serious right now? Like, what's going? Like, mm -hmm. really? 
Okay, if anybody Everyone. is watching this, anyone. <laughs> Um, just so you're not dealing with these like pieces where you're like, what does this even mean? So at one point, the the narrator of the book, who is Numbers, kind of like the head roach, he was like climbing all over this character named Elizabeth, and he went into her vagina. Is that Elizabeth or Ruth? No, Elizabeth. Both. Yeah. Both. Okay, so but he does it to one woman. And yes. then goes to the other apartment, and then goes in the other woman's vagina. Like, you want me to believe it happened once, but I'm supposed to believe it happened twice? Like, <laughs> just, I don't know. I mean, I guess they were setting up a comparison there, as far as, like, terrain and sense go. But that's where, where the author kind of lost me. Because it's just, like... Of all the things that happened in the book, that was probably like the most unbelievable. Like nobody's yes. gonna feel a roach crawling all over them. Apparently not. And, and so, for the sake of comparison, the type of roach that he was was different than yes the American cockroach. Yeah, they're the Germanic, the Germanicus strain. Okay, so they're smaller. Yes. Okay. Okay. Because remember, they, he goes to the other colony and, you know, he goes up with, against an American gets, woman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. <laughs> You're my bitch now. <laughs> yeah. Essentially. This dude did research, or maybe he Maybe he just was fascinated before, with cockroaches. Maybe he, maybe he was a bug collector when he was a kid. <laughs> Versus American mm -hmm. cockroach. Yeah, the, the American cockroach is much bigger. Two or three times as big. Well, it's just oh, wow. like cockroach types. Or families. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I, well, going back to what the part where Desiree said she was turned off by the book, you know, it's, it's almost like, well, I'm not sure how you want to play this because either way it seems stereotypical. Either, oh, yes, the thin blonde person who's, you know, the one, oh, she should be the attractive one. But he's not. He's attracted to the chubbier, dark-haired woman. And it's like, well, it's, it's a stereotype either way you go with this. So I, don't see, <laughs> I, don't see, I don't see a winner here. It's just, I don't know why we're crossing lines of species. Like, can we also note the fact that it's, what, 20 years old? Mm-hmm. It's a product of its time. Years old. Okay, so speaking about that, I don't know if it's a product of its time. I feel like it's even weirder for the time that it came out in. Yeah, well, six um, years after Joe's Apartment came out. I mean, we all remember that. Wait, when did Joe's before Apartment the, come out? 96. So six years before. This book was out six years before Joe's Apartment. Right. Uh, I never saw Joe's apartment. I'm wondering if they're related in any way, shape, or form. Like this was the, the inspiration, inspiration for Joe's behind apartment. that horrible movie. <clears throat> did you see Joe's I, apartment? I did not. No, I haven't seen it either. Although the, now that we're talking about it, the book, a pop, book popped into mind. Tom Robinson's um, "Skinny Legs and All," which happened to come out a couple years before this. So I'm wondering if there was some influence there. Without going into detail, because it, um, Skinny Legs all does talk about religion. It talks about sexuality, but not in those terms. It's, it's a bit, it's a bit uh, more convoluted, but also probably a better read than this is. So, um, I think something that was kind of interesting, and just you know, when you compare it to back then versus now. Um, I was kind of taken aback by the racism. Um, mm -hmm. It just, I mean, I know we still deal with racism today. I, I don't think I read it in literature quite, you know, unless it's a book about racism, I don't think I, I read about it like that. So that was kind of um, uncomfortable. But, but then again, you're using, you know, as you said, modern um, perspective. It, right. Yeah. Um, so what did you think of the characters? 
Are you asking me? Yeah. Anyway. She's looking at you, so I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who are you asking? You're talking to me? Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, I, it's hard to say because I don't, I don't know I don't if I disliked were, Ira or Oliver more. I don't know they were both annoying. portrayed as mm. annoying stereotypes, like two different types of, of, of maybe even two opposite, like far opposite ends of, of the spectrum, you know? There was really no growth between anybody. It's just... Well, the, book, the idea of the book, I think, is to see how the cockroach change in relations to their and surroundings and their environment, especially what Numbers goes through to try to preserve the colony and his friends. So, oh, my goodness. His, his adventure on Rufus out to him and back through the yes. sewers. Of, like, what? I don't I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. <laughs> and, Well, that I, was... Outside of it being, like, uh, because the cockroach itself... Like, grew up on a on in a Bible, right? That's the reason why it knew that book. Well, he did, yeah. The numbers is a book of the Bible, yes. Right. <clears throat> so, like, do all of his specific adventures mimic something from that book that I've never read? Oh yeah, I haven't read the Bible either, so I wouldn't know. Like, maybe that's maybe what we're like, missing here. <laughs> <laughs> we really want to find meaning in this book. <laughs> It makes the Bible a much more interesting read, but uh, no, I, I'm not sure. I don't know if it comes from numbers or not. Um, I'd have to go look. Be absolutely honest with you. I might have to do that just <laughs> just to see just what all the, see. All the is about. You know, like asking mm -hmm. some of these people in the in the in this cult community. Maybe we shouldn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And it could be just be that you just don't get it, and that and that's fine too. You know? I'm okay with that. I mean, I, I yeah. read it, I experienced it. I don't, I don't think yeah. I would do it again. I don't think it's really necessary. <laughs> read it again. I, it just, I mean, unless there, you know, unless you know, like there was some kind of thing is oh, well, this corresponds to this. And I say, oh, well, that's nice. I don't know if I'd read it again, but you know, <laughs> right, <like it. laughs> right. Oh, maybe it makes a little more sense now. Okay, cool. Yeah. But you know, I mean, I, you know, there are certain parts you can tell. Okay, yes, he's writing this to be funny. He's writing to this, but it, I don't know for some reason it just fell flat for me. Like there, there were a lot of good components there, but they didn't mesh into a hole for me. I, get I it. felt no, no uh, emotional connection to any of the characters, cockroach or otherwise. So, was there a specific part where you were just like? Ugh. I mean, yeah, because originally you seemed like you were sort of interested. I would say, yeah, I, I mean, I was actually when he, you know, he's talking about Helena Troy, and it's okay, so there's some kind of underpinning to this novel. You know, it's, not, it's not about Cockroach House Party or something like that. And, uh, um, you know, he did, like I said, he did have some good ideas and such, but, you know, I, I just don't think they, for me, they did not gel together into a cohesive whole. You know, it's like, okay, we have numbers, and it's clear that regards if he wants to be or not he is the leader of his people and his people ironically have been all you know well, we're not ants you know we're indiv individuals it's like yeah if you do individuals you're all going to get killed separately you know so he numbers takes it upon himself to be and i guess eventually becomes the prophet that they need so <laughs> and it just leads them to and, and sometimes yeah, the prophets are wrong yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, and sometimes the prophets are wrong, you know. It's so, you know. One of the funny parts I thought was like, you know, when he comes back to the colony after the germ, the, the germ, no, the American cockroach. So you don't like essentially. You don't know what I suffered in there, you know. That sort of a thing. So, yeah, I mean, there, there were some interesting parts, like you know, with the Roach Motel, and how I think it was Bismarck that got caught in it. You know, he's yeah. like, how dumb do you have to be? And then it's like, well. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Man, now we know. Cause I, but then again, you you know, they were mal malnutrition. You know, they weren't operating on all cylinders. Let's say, and they, oh, the food, you know, and go in. There were certain parts that I could say the writing was uh, like it actually worked. Um, yeah, he did set up quite a few different situations to where it would lead mm -hmm. to another situation pretty nicely. But right. it's just the whole thing. You're right. It didn't. It didn't sit well. Um, mm -hmm. 
like to, just the fact that he set up that uh, that numbers ran down there because he thought he heard voices like hey like of people actually enjoying themselves and having fun, but it was more like he ran into the Roach Motel, got mm -hmm. stuck, and then he was like, "Oh shit!" Oh. And I was like, "Help, help us!" Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was like, "Oh damn!" Yeah, it's like, That's to be you. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> That's dark. But I mean, it. I think I agree with the the sexualization of. Bugs and both and both women, yeah. I, I and really the memoir and all that, fact, you know, that they're cracked up to be either. Right, but I, I just think it's how they how they displayed the animal affection and I don't know, just didn't didn't need all that. Like I think it would have been a better story if they left some of that stuff out. Oh, you oh you mean the bestiality? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Can we even the real? Oh. <laughs> Can we even well, that's essentially what it is. Like, what? Sorry, Jessica, is that a trigger? Oh my gosh. <laughs> it seems like, I don't know, to me, it seems that. like he was sober when he started the book, and by the end of it, not so much. <laughs> maybe. Uh, yeah, but go ahead. <laughs> I don't know. I was going to say, maybe he was just living out some more I, I would suggest, as a counterpoint to this reading, Tom, the skinny legs and all. Which kind of treats the same subject, but in a very different way. Mm -hmm. so. I've read that one twice so far, and that, I think it's a much better book. So, and it well, came out ironically two days earlier. Time makes it already a better book. Well, no, well, well, I Who read it twice that? for the book club I belong to. So. Oh, okay. What? Who wrote that? Sorry, uh, Tom Robbins. Okay, so he's the same one that want, wrote like Jitterbug Perfume, because I think I have. Yep, that's it. Yeah, I have a book. That's the only book I have by him. I do not have that kind of knowledge for authors. Well, it was a book that was highly recommended to me, and I went out and I bought it, and it's been sitting on my shelf for many like yeah. years. <laughs> How do you memorize your entire bookshelf? I don't know all the video no, games no, that I own. That's not, no, because <laughs> I'm pretty sure I saw. Tom, because didn't you finish it recently? I mean, recently yes. within like the last, yeah, yeah. Yes. So I yes. think you I saw him correct. post about recently. it. Okay. I saw him post about it on Fairly Facebook. recently, yes. And his covers look similar, like the the artwork. Yes. They're cohesive. So I remember looking at that the, book and being the same like, oh, yeah. Say, yeah, yeah. So interesting. Mm -hmm. um, a memorable moment. Yep. Yeah, some of the I mean, some of the writing was good. Like I said, the first part was strong. It's like that very first chapter. It's like, okay, I can get into this. We're, we're going to hell on a try, and yada yada yada. And then it comes across something juvenile, like you know the again, the, not to harp on it, but you know the sexualization scenes. Like, oh, come on, really? How do you? you know, I, I kind of get where you're going with this. You know, the primitive, animalistic nature, unintended. You know nature of the scenes, but it's like, it's, I don't know, some of it was just a little too graphic for me. It's like, yeah, well, I don't think we needed that. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Like, even if we were to compare it to, like, you know, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, um, mm -hmm. I think when you see things from a different perspective, I think it can be comedic, but there were some things that were just like, no, I don't need to know about mm -hmm. the methane coming out of her butt while he's in the toilet. And, like, mm -hmm. there was just... So much that was like, I don't need to see it from this It's almost as if you're there, yeah. <laughs> I should have made this a scratch and sniff book. That would be awesome. <laughs> like, this perspective is not what I was looking for. Yeah, and again, I could see why he did that, but it's at the same time, it's like, I get it, but I'm not sure I like it. <laughs> sort of. so. I think he was just trying to be clever. Clever yeah, with his was, writing seemed, and like say it was things in a way. The intelligence level up. Yeah, to but where right. it didn't need to be for the content. Right. Is that, is that, does that make sense? What did you say? Like he tried to push the intelli intelligence level above like what the content can actually hold. <laughs> <laughs> like he was just trying to make it all showy and special, <laughs> but he did it with cockroaches. Oh, God. Mm. But it, the cockroaches weren't the bad parts. <laughs> I guess. Oh. Uh, well, they were involved in all the bad parts, but yeah. Um, no, like I said, it started off really good, really well, I thought. And uh, then 
the, he didn't keep up with it as much as I thought he was going to through the book. So. Huh. What if he started it at some point in his life and things were a little rocky and then everything got fixed and then, and then it went downhill again. And then he finished his book at this part of his life, but the beginning mm -hmm. of it, he needed to finish mm -hmm. it then. I don't know, man. Something changed. You're right. right. <clears throat> but um, I, I don't know. I, I know that I know the main character is the main human character is Irish Fishblatt, but I, I don't know if you guys listen to NPR at all. But there's a host on there called Ira Glass from uh, This American Life, and then whenever they said his name, I could only think of him. <laughs> oh man! That's yeah, it was. It was uh, but I could I could see him in that role, ironically enough. So. So yeah, I think yeah. I, something that I missed was how did Oliver and Elizabeth know Rufus? Apparently Rufus visited everybody. Yeah, he just made his rounds. That's So then they did Coke too? Uh-huh. I would imagine. Same thing with the Italian family. Yeah. Poor Rufus just trying to make a living. <laughs> Yeah, he gets pinned for the uh, for the cockroaches murder. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Framed by cockroaches, like cockroaches. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Hmm? It didn't matter if it was framed or not. The cockroach just wanted somebody dead. He <laughs> <laughs> was shit. I wanted him dead. His family <laughs> dead. <laughs> but. I what's wow. he gonna do with Ruth now? Nothing. Like what's who gonna do with Ruth? <laughs> numbers. Oh my god, they're there. <laughs> yeah, I mean she could just move out of the apartment. Well, or now whatever, she's you know, gonna turn into a mess because her lover is dead, so he, numbers is gonna be happy and well fed. I feel like Ruth was the sanest like person, the the best person in the whole story. Yeah. Like she was logical, she didn't really take our shit too much, mm -hmm. she didn't get into trouble, she was like she was cool peeps. <laughs> and all they did was talk trash about her. Mm -hmm. Because she didn't have a pretty face or whatever. Or she was a little overweight. Yeah, she yeah. I think it was yeah, I think I remember the old bit of her being overweight part more often than anything else. So, like I said, that's a stereotype in and of itself. So, I think yeah. anyway. Well, actually, yeah, and it sounds like a count. Well, the the blonde being, you know, not the one you want is like a counter stereotype to that. It's like, well, you know, which one do you choose? So. I don't even know if that it really wasn't one of those. There wasn't really a love triangle there, was there? It was just the roaches trying to force something that they were trying to. They were just trying to dis disrupt everything. Oh yeah, they were trying to hook up. Um, Ira and, and Elizabeth. Uh, Elizabeth. Yeah. Yeah, but it really didn't. Apparently, well, it didn't work for a reason. I guess, right? Yes. Well, yeah. I I forget, I forget the reason why. Maybe it was after Numbers went in and did his taste test. I don't know. <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> it was. Oh, my God. Oh, no, she wouldn't do for him. We're going to try the other one now. So. Damn it. I, so. Thought, and then I thought I had gotten you... lucky. I looked it up to see if there was, like, a reading guide for this. Oh, oh And I came up with a page, but then it says, no discussion questions at this time. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's the thing with more obscure books you won't find. Maybe I should make one. <laughs> why, why should you read this book? Oh. Uh, no, seriously, it isn't that bad. I, you know, it, it, but like I said, there are good elements. But the one yeah. I could have done with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean... No, I, I I I do feel bad that we're, I'm completely harping on this thing, but it's not it's not trash. It's not all completely right. awful. It's just right. 
Epic is probably a reason why you never finished it so many years ago. Yeah, I know, but now, like, after so many it's years, hard. it's like, was it, it was clearly not worth the wait. I don't know. It was mm -hmm. comical, really. It was, but not in a way that made me laugh with the book. I laughed at it. How about that? So, right. <clears throat> so I started a little free library at work. And mm -hmm. I've been putting books in there. Like, as I read them, if I'm not, like, emotionally attached to it, I'll just drop it in there. You're going to put it in there. Aren't you? And so, so I've been <laughs> thinking totally about this. There, I've been thinking about this. You know, <laughs> like, oh, I've finished reading it, and now I can give it away. But I feel like I'm going to have to hold on to it just because of the journey this book has taken in my life. And, like, everything that's happened. I feel like I can't let it go. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, conversation has been working up to this Oh, what do we and do I also now? feel like my cousin totally trolled me, and it took like. And it's finally paying off. <laughs> and I, and I'm gonna have to like pass that. My off email plan like, work. This book was awesome. Here, you should read it. <laughs> you're gonna start a chain. You're gonna start a thing. A chain. That's that's the next Rick. It's the Rick next Ashley. Rick roll. Rick roll, I guess. I knew it. It's Rick roll. rolled. <laughs> Book two gets Rickrolled by Desiree. Oh, that would be great. Oh my god. Actually? Yeah. Okay, so the, people do this. People do this on book two. They actually, they actually have something called a traveling book. And they give it to someone, and that person has a certain amount of time to read it, and they actually leave notes. In the you know in the margins and between lines and oh, stuff I like that. that. I think I'm one. Oh. I think I'm one of them. You can do it. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna make the road go. just have no king. And you need to yes, release it out into the world. <laughs> Um, but but then again, you know, keep in mind we are discussing this like what three weeks after the fact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there is that too. So in the office hey. defense, I know I'm just saying that's 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 the parameters we're dealing with here. <laughs> I wonder if he's written anything else since then. Stop. He probably has. I would think. Don't go down that road. Are you, trying, are you trying to read more? No, more but like, I, you know, back then self publishing wasn't what it is now, right? Now anybody can kind of write something and put it out there. Yeah, and, he has a few uh, books. I'm just Actually. wondering, like, how the publisher read it and was like, we need to publish this. <laughs> mm. This needs to get published. <laughs> Other people must uh, experience this. It was edgy back then. It was edgy. It was like, oh my god, <laughs> well, see things from the perspective of a roach. You start writing like religion and sex into books. How do you pass it along to the mainstream media? If it's all, if it's looked down upon, if it's like, oh, it's so, so, mm -hmm. so bad. Okay, let's make roaches do it. That'll work. Mm -hmm. That'll get it out there. That way, Again. you're not looking at people. You're not. You're not just. You're not actually talking shit about people. Characters doing these things. Mm -hmm. You have no, you know, you can't attach to these uh, these characters. So what, why would you cause an uproar over it? Well, it's just kind of the same thing that Tom Robbins does in skinny legs and all. Just throwing that out there. Interesting, very interesting. Yeah. And the skinny legs and all about roaches, or it's about like spiders. No, and no. <laughs> why is it going to be about bugs? I don't. I thought it was. It was. It's being called skinny legs and all. I don't know. I don't know. Well, yeah, you, so. you have to read the book to. But no, <laughs> I I spiders. <laughs> yes. But um, you know, the 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 main characters, non-human characters, are a can of beans, a painted stick, and I, there's one other one I can't remember, like a sock, I think. <laughs> Dirty sock. And Tom wrote this twice. Okay. It gets a bit preachy, but it is a good book. Interesting. So, but I just think it's interesting that it came out two year, two or three years before this one did. Yeah. So. Yeah. So but, a peanut stick, a can of beans. Sock. And a dirty sock, yeah. Yes. Okay. So what did you think about... <clears throat> The names of the roaches. I know they were kind of each named for where they were born and stuff like that, but yeah, what they ate, you know, which I thought was a really good idea. You are what you read, essentially, and that's the way they talked. That was great, huh? 
for Julia Child. Yes. As you flipped out at the end there. So they seem totally okay with like cannibalism. Which is like they're roaches. I know, but do real roaches do that? Like when there's no food. Ew. Yeah, I would think. And then and there's nothing else to like eat. Like they eat our fingernails okay. and our eyelashes Meat and, and shit. matter work. Yeah. Dead skin. That's so gross. <laughs> That's so gross. They're scavengers, man. Yep. <clears throat> they and Keith Richards will survive the atomic apocalypse. <laughs> and they will feast upon our rotting flesh. Yes. Once more. Amen. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, did you like yeah, how we described how to kill the dinosaurs? Oh, yeah. Uh, remind me. I, I know it was good, but I can't remember what the. Oh, that they actually just clogged all the nasal cavities of all the major oh, yeah. dinosaurs yeah. until they died. That as a family of cockroaches, they infested their right. nostrils and killed the dinosaurs. It's really what happened. It wasn't meteors, it was cockroaches. <laughs> yeah, and again, that's, that's one of the good cockroaches. Yeah, it's a good idea. It's one of those good ideas. It's like, okay, it's one that keeps you reading, but then again, okay, what else, what else is built around it? They're all like, oh, but re this is what really happened. Yeah. You know, the Tyrannosaurus, when they rip things up and tear it up, mm -hmm. cockroaches would follow them in families, yeah. entire colonies would follow them. Mm -hmm. And then the dinosaurs would turn, uh, that one day, out of nowhere, <laughs> dinosaurs decided to turn around and stomp all the cockroaches dead. So the cockroaches decided to get even, and they killed all of the dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. Which is what they did here. suffocating them. That's what really happened to the dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. Which is foreshadowing the, what happened in the novel. So, <laughs> essentially, that was a bit more complex than that here. But, of course, couldn't the dinosaurs sneeze? I guess, you know, maybe not. So. So, ratings. <laughs> ratings. I'm going to let John go first. Okay, John. What's the rating scale? It's I did not like it. Okay, one is didn't like it. Two oh. is it's okay. Yeah. Three is you liked it. Four no. is you really liked it, and five is it was awesome. <laughs> Two. I didn't hate it, but I would. I was like meh. I didn't like it, so it doesn't get the three star. So it stops right. at two. What did you rate it, Tom? If I if they had half stars, I would have given it two and a half. Does race three stars will even us out? <laughs> How do you know I'm gonna give it three stars? Uh, are you? <laughs> Did you? Uh uh Yeah. Did you have a good you have a good review? I don't know. I probably Did you like it. Was it intellectual stimulation? <laughs> I think that's that. That's the it words was, I was looking for okay, earlier. Okay, it was. Those two are together, but not the yes. same. Yeah. It was Maybe not at the same time. There's <laughs> intellectual, there's stimulation, <laughs> just not together. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was creative. Yes, it was. Yeah. Good idea. Very good ideas, but quite possibly drug related. I, no. I kind of feel like there had to be some. No. It was a fever dream. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I can't even imagine, though, as an author, like, because, you know, at that point when you're writing mm -hmm. a Roach's memoir, you have to kind of get into that role. Like, I wonder mm -hmm. what his life was like while he was writing that book. Ask, ask Franz Kafka. Oh. <laughs> oh. He wrote a book called Metamorphosis where. You know, I think I might have recently purchased that. What? Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you have been here. <laughs> How many books have you bought in the last two weeks? Let's not uh, talk about going that. Out of Let's not talk ban. about that at all. Oh, this is oh, yeah, that's right, the book buying ban. Meta. Oh, those books. Yeah, no, those are those don't count. Those are books. It was digital. They totally yeah. don't count. <laughs> totally don't count. Oh, the one I got for my birthday? It doesn't count. I didn't buy that one. Of course not. <laughs> oh, but 
Well, these two is right now. If, if they're gifts, they don't count. Correct. Okay, so I, I've been getting the Goodreads, like, oh, deals of the week, and the BookBub deals of the week, and I keep seeing <laughs> books that I recognize for, like, $1.99, and... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Doesn't count. <laughs> okay, and 30 books later. <laughs> I swear I bought it, but it's not coming up. Did you buy the book? Did you buy it? It has a, uh, I, I understand it's a good book. It's about a man's metamorphosis into a, into cockroach. a cockroach. Yeah, I think Carrie yeah. said she read it, but Carrie yeah. is like petrified of cockroaches, so she said it was like horrible. Mm -hmm. She had to read it in school, though. This was like, oh, well, yeah. Like the fly from the 80s? That's kind of. Movie. Yeah, kind of the same idea. Wait, so you read this? Wait, his name is Kafka? Yes, Franz Kafka is the name of the author. The Metamorphosis is the name of the book. Oh my. Riveting many, TV. Many different covers for this. Yes. Mm, much, many covers. <laughs> Come, my precious. <laughs> have you done? What have I done? How, what, what, why are you not going after the other book that he's mentioned like eight times? Oh, um, skinny legs, skinny legs and all. Yes. Uh, I mean, wait. Why am I facilitating? This? Yeah, yes. why are you enabling her? Why am I encouraging this? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> wait, I got a book called Cannibalism: A Perfectly Natural History. That's not Perfectly it. natural. Nothing to see here. It's a legitimate strategy. Mm -hmm. That would be a modest solution by Oh no, uh, okay. Swift. Sorry. There was like a, a grasshopper or praying mantis on it. The book that I got was Incubation. Oh. So no, I did not. Not the same system. thing. <laughs> not the same, same thing. thing. No. Not at all. So what would you give the rating then? Bring it back. Yeah, you know, I think I think you're probably on point with the two point five. But, you know, they don't have half stars, so I would just, I would uh, Well, my Goodreads review is a two, and you give it a three, which is fine. Yeah. Like, I don't, I rarely hate myself for reading something, <laughs> you know? Like, I rarely feel like, ah, oh, what a waste of time this was. It was definitely creative and weird, and made me feel uncomfortable, and... Mm -hmm. And I think there was an interesting story in there, even if it wasn't yes. what you told. Oh, well, even didn't come together for you, yeah. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't for you, that's the thing. So it wasn't expressed well enough? No, I think, I just think that maybe if he had brought it down a little bit, like I think he was trying to make it something that it wasn't. Mm. You know, like... No, not shock value. Like, I don't mind the story. I don't mind the things that happened, but the language that it was told in, I felt like it just tried too hard to be mm -hmm. intellectual. That's kind of what I was trying to yeah. get earlier. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree mm -hmm. with you. I yeah, it had its intellectual good. points. It had its, for lack of a better word, juvenile points, and they don't really connect. I mean, a good mixture of that, I think it's like Monty Python. They're intellectual, but they're ridiculous. Oh, they somehow, but they somehow put that together in a really funny way. But this just didn't gel together for me. Okay, that was all right. I get it. I'm, not a, I'm not a Monty Python fan. <sighs> yeah, okay. Well. <laughs> just, okay, Terry, Terry Pratchett, I'm also going to tell Jeff, and you're going to watch at least one. No, no, movie. I've tried, and I just didn't think it was funny. No, I thought it was ridiculous. I thought. What? It's ridiculous. We're going to watch The Life of Brian. Oh my God. That's, that's like the more, that's, I would say the most Monty Python that has the most meaning. Yes. I think that would be trying to break in. Yeah. Yeah. You want to take it out? Okay. <laughs> I don't know if you're trying to wrap up or, I'll be back, guys. Talk about okay. So yeah, I don't think there's much more to say about it. No. <laughs> Other than I don't know, I think um, 
other than there being like racist elements, I think mm. that was, was kind of a lot of it, though. It was a big chunk of it. Well, it could have so racist elements. How do you self? interpret the name of the book itself? What'd you say? All right, he's going to leave. He's going to drop that bomb and leave. <laughs> well, I don't even know what he said. He said what does the like title that. mean in the context of the book? Oh. Essentially. So um, what John had said was mm-hmm. that when Numbers left and he went on his adventure, mm-hmm. that the rest of the colony had kind of just started following somebody else and they got... Uh, and falling apart, yeah. Yeah. And so at that point, they didn't have their leader. Right. But throughout the book, he makes mention of how the roaches are individuals and they do things their own way. You know, so. Some, in some cases, it's good to have a king. It's good to be, have a king, not necessarily be the king. Right. But, uh, you know, because it, it, well, let's, let's hypothesize then. If. Numbers hadn't done what he'd done, what would happen to the colony? Would they end, end up the same way? Think? I think so. Maybe just not as quickly. Maybe mm-hmm. at different points. Yeah, so we don't know. You know, is the unified action better than individual actions of the, you know, the mob, let's say? Right. And who can say? You know, they could have gotten caught out by, you know, Ira or um, Ruth or whatever and got sprayed or what have you. So I'm not sure that there's a win in that situation. As we know, the colony itself mostly perished. Right. Except for numbers himself. And he got, he, you know, ironically enough, that was a nice twist on the Promised Land story. I thought that was good. So, because it's like, oh my God, is he going to kill off numbers now? And then he like turns it around and says, "No, actually, he's the one that survives." So, I just I, the fact that he was always present, and they just didn't know, or they didn't feel him, or they didn't see him, or them. Oh, the cockroaches! Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, impl- the implication is that the colony is so large, but that you know somehow the humans are not able to detect them. Right. You know, which is a little hard to believe. Well, I don't know. Maybe that's accurate. I feel like I only I ever see roaches when my cat brings them to me. <laughs> <laughs> I found a tribute. Yeah, pretty much. Hmm? Uh, but, um, yeah, so, okay, so then it is possible, but, you know. Right, but it just seemed a little unbelievable in the story itself. Yeah, they could, they could just like go wherever they want to, right? Deal with, except where it was meaningful for the plot that they did it. Mm-hmm. You know, so because it sounds like numbers could run all over the place and you know not be detected. It's like he was in the kitchen, the living room, the bathroom, and the bedroom. I don't think there's that many more rooms in a New York apartment. So, <laughs> right, they seem to get around quickly, but yet when he was mm. climbing Elizabeth and Ruth, mm. it sounded like it took hours and hours. Mm. And hours, so. Yes. Because of the obstacles in his it's path, scary. shall we say, without going into them. <laughs> say, yeah, this is a little too graphic, but, yeah, you know, I don't know. That, that, that kind of put me off, but I, I understand where he was going with it, but. Just like, you know, I don't, think, I don't think we need all this description. You know, this could be short by about four more pages. But, and again, I, all this is not to say it isn't a bad book. But I don't know, like I, said, I don't think it's just, I just don't think it's for me. Right. So. I think there is this subtle weight that has been lifted off my shoulders. <laughs> now that this book that has been on my shelf for so long. Like, Journey is complete. Yes. Yes. Well, well, now you can say you've read it and release it back out into the wild and <laughs> you know, let other people uh, 
Oh, experience, life. experience it, and who knows? Maybe say, "Oh my God, this is really good," yeah, and then you say, "Well, good for you," and it wasn't for me, but you know, those were the breaks. Yeah, we're still alive. Anything new come up? Anything new come up? Anything new come up? Uh, not too much. Well, we did talk a bit about your question before you left. Uh, the title in the context of the book. Put your headphones back on. He's talking to you, and you're taking your headphones off. What the hell? Yeah, you were talking. Nice. He said no, that. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. That we were I talking about that... your question. Yes. Okay. The title in the context of the book. Where does the meaning from? I mean, you were asking because you wanted to reveal what you were saying. Something. <laughs> well, we were saying that the roaches were kind of, they have this individualistic mentality. But why wouldn't trigger they all acted as a colony instead? Because maybe they weren't as individualistic as they thought. Mm -hmm. They needed a king? What? They needed a king? Maybe. I mean, you know, it's... But then again, you know, he makes a point over and over in the book that roaches have survived for this many thousands of years based on their individual impulses. So is that in spite of themselves? <laughs> is it that, you know, do they really do they really need a king? I mean, what one of the questions I asked Ezra is like, what what if the if numbers didn't do what he did, what would have been the fate of the colony? They were living in a completely different spot in the house, but they were all starving. Right. Again. Right. So they were going to die anyway. <laughs> right. So do they need a king? I guess is the question. He'd killed them all and then lived on. Yes, got to the promised land himself. So. Like how he found God, then said, screw the book, and killed Ivor. Right. Spoilers. <laughs> You're supposed to say that before. Yeah, it's okay. We said that before, right? Yeah. Yeah, we we back at the beginning of this of this podcast, this video cast. So, John is uh, further banned from nominating books. <laughs> <laughs> Your privileges have been revoked. <laughs> Hang on, I'll be back. No, I'm kidding. Of course um, you are. <laughs> because I hate it that people, my friends, are just like winky. Every chance they get, they bring up winky. I'm not going to take your recommendations, Desiree, because you made me read winky. You're going to winky me again, aren't you? <laughs> Don't winky me. I wonder if I still have that book. I think, like, at one point, you are not nominating it for this. No. <laughs> you are not nominating it for this book club. No. Oh my god. So funny. Um, so I think I don't know, John. Did you have anything else to add before we move on to what this month's book is? No, and I, I guess I'm okay with being banned. I was kidding. I no, was kidding. it's okay. I don't. I <laughs> banned myself too. I'll vote myself off the island. No, you can't. You can't. Um, yeah, I said that I refuse. Apparently, Winky got a 3.1 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. But, um... I almost think this is Winky better. redeemed. You think, you think this is better than Winky? It was kind of just as weird. Okay. Like, maybe a little bit more modern, mm -hmm. but... I don't know. I think he ends up in prison. He's like, it's <laughs> weird, man. <laughs> Why does it sound like the forerunner to Ted? You know it what? Might maybe, be, maybe. Actually, it came out in two thousand six. Yeah, when did Ted come out? What is Oh, I don't know when Ted came out, but that was like two thousand ten, right? Yeah. Maybe, <clears throat> but this is <throat> under speculative fiction. Mm -hmm. So, um, so this month, which is like within the next week or so, we're going to have another we do live this again. chat. 
<laughs> so that we can discuss September's book, which is Brain on Fire by Susanna Cahalen. And this is a memoir about a woman who started kind of blacking out and acting a little kooky and uh, was just having issues and they didn't know what was going on or why she was behaving the way she was behaving. And it took them a while to kind of find a diagnosis for mm -hmm. her. And it's her memoir where she talks about um, the things that happened to her. And uh, it, should, it should be interesting, I think. Are you very far into it, Tom? I read the first part, so. Yeah, so uh, I know I've given some thought to writing a memoir myself, and, and I keep asking myself, you know, well, people don't remember everything. Like, you don't remember. So how do, you, how do you write things when you don't remember, like, all the details? But it was interesting hearing the beginning of the book where she was saying that, you know, I took bits and pieces from friends and family that I talked to and from right. the, the hospital cameras, things that I observed that were, like, caught on tape. And mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, that was pretty. Are you looking forward to Brain on Fire? A little bit. After um, I found out that we were reading it, I had a little bit of time to uh, think about it, I guess. I was going to skip it, but... No, I'm interested. Okay. Well, you definitely can't skip the one after that. I know. <laughs> Can you tell them what it is? It's Saga. Yes, Volume 1. Yes, Saga Volume 1. The graphic novel. Did you show him what you did, or did you tell him? I did what? Did you tell him what you did? Oh, no, I didn't. Well, I can tell the inter me and the internets what, what what's going on. I um. What did you do, Desiree? Yeah. Uh, well, there's a lot of volumes. I feel like you keep going in and out. Do you want to get them? Sure, no. sure, no. sure. No, go ahead. Hi. I think I know where this is going. <laughs> I mean, I figured if we were going to read it, the, 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 well yes, do it right? your, your, your book buying ban is in force, full force, <laughs> I can tell. Wow. That was, that's the fancy schmancy versions. Yeah, yeah so that's nice. the deluxe versions. He loves. So. Yeah, they're pretty heavy and they're hardcover. Yeah. So yes, they are hard I cover. got deluxe one and two. <laughs> nice. Wait, is that what? An alien breastfeeding? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I'm looking forward to jumping into Saga. Looks like you already have. <laughs> Start <laughs> reading it. I have. But I did. They Just came in the mail yesterday. yesterday. Yeah, they came in the mail yesterday. Mm. So that I'm will be have October's to book. Out. I'm gonna to have to figure out where volume one ends. Oh, that you can't open that until the other one's done. Until Brain on Fire, so? Yeah. Okay. Sure. So. Sure. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right, sure. So, as a reminder, um, you guys can join us live in the chat on camera by becoming a book club VIP on Patreon, it's patreon.com slash LibriLabra. And there's a few other rewards for kind of um, the LibriLabra community. You do get a custom bookmark. Did you? Did I show them to you? Oh, I kind of like them. I was happy with yeah, them. They're, they're colorful and they had like a cool quote on. Um, it's a Neil Gaiman quote. I don't have one at my desk to show. But it is a custom bookmark. Jeff had it on his desk somewhere. I don't know. So, and, and there's other perks like getting to nominate a book. Actually, you get to nominate three books if you become a book club VIP. And, and there's a few other perks. So if you guys want details, you can go ahead and check that out. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, Tom, thank you for reading all the crazy books that we throw at you. I'm sorry. I won't do it again. You do likewise, so I can, I can only reciprocate. So. 
<laughs> and thank you for joining us. And we'll be seeing each other again very soon to talk about Brain on Fire. And hopefully we'll be joined by Kelly, our other book yeah. at that point, since it was a book that was nominated by her. So uh, thanks for joining us this evening, guys. I don't know if you'll ever get to read The Roaches Have No Cake, but I, I really do think I am going to make it a traveling. I think that's funny. Yeah. I do. I. It should be interesting. You should make a hashtag for it, too. Yeah, maybe. So people can talk about it elsewhere. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining us. <laughs> Have a good night. Bye, guys. Good night.